In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the basics of setting up a project in Unreal. So I've already gone through a launch the Epic Games browser. I've clicked through the engine. I've gotten to the point where I'm setting up a new project. So inside here, you'll see there's lots of different templates for you to choose from. There's a first person, a 2D side scroller, a top down, twin stick shooter, even a vehicle for driving around. What we want and what we're going to go with is a third person. We want to have a character that's running around inside it. So inside there, uh, uh, we're making a desktop console game. The other option is mobile tablet, but we're going to stick with desktop. We're going to go for maximum quality. And I'm going to start mine with no starter content here. If you want to have some of the additional items it comes with, such as torches, you could start with a starter content project of your own. Uh, it, doesn't, it adds some additional uh, objects that take up a little bit more memory. Uh, uh, it can work just fine for you though. So I've already specified a location on my hard drive that's specific to my machine. And now I'm gonna give my project a name and say create project. And so that window closes. Unreal is gonna pop up saying it's starting. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy my the path from my folder location because I'm gonna bring my pieces into my scene. Okay, so this is Unreal. Uh, over on the side, we have different object types we can bring in. We have the world outliner, which specifies everything that's inside the scene. Details that if we click on something, you'll see the details for it. There's a character. If I hit play, I can use WASD commands on my mouse to run around inside of here. And down here at the bottom, if I right click, I can just orbit around. If I left click and move my mouse, I can navigate the space. If I hold both buttons, I can pan left or right or up or down. All right. So what I need to do is start bringing in the pieces we just made. So I'm going to come over here to Content Browser, and I'm going to click on this little button, which expands the browser here. I'm going to click on the main folder of content, say Add New Folder, and I'm going to call it Halls. And I'm going to click on it because I want to be in that Halls folder. So now if I say Import, I navigate to my location and I select my FBX file and I say open. Okay, so this is the FBX import option. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off auto generate collision. I'm going to show the advanced options and in here I want to turn off generate light map UVs because we will go through and make our own light maps uh, for our objects depending on what they are. We're going to either build our own collision or we're going to uh, specify what type of collision we want in engine. So we can turn this off. Uh, we need to turn off import materials and import textures. And now I say import. And so there we go. Now our modular pieces have all come in. So if I double click here, I have this straight hallway piece. Over on the side, it shows all of the different materials that make up my object. And if I have made light maps, here under general settings, I can specify my light map coordinate index. So in this case, I did make light maps for the model in UV2. Unreal is based on UV0. Right? So light map index 1 means, yes, that's what it's going to use. I can even view my 0, right? So you see these UVs go all over the place. 1, right? There's my light maps, so that looks correct. If I want to check my collision, I click Show Simple Collision, and there's the collision geometry that I made for my object. All right. If you haven't built collision yet, it's something that you will be doing soon. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the next step for us is to build our material. So let's go ahead and we'll import a material. Oh, uh, oops. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to just delete that guy. I need to import. So I'm going to import and I'm going to select my textures. So in this quick example here, I only have just a few textures. Now I'm going to do right click material. I'm going to say M underscore brick shiny. By putting an M underscore at the front of it, it'll allow me to search easier. So if I double click on this, It'll bring that in. Oops. I'm trying to grab the corner and maneuver this. Okay. 
I can bring the brick shiny texture in and I can plug it into the base color. Right. You see it gets a little bit washed out. It's very shiny. Uh, one thing you could do if you don't have any other textures is you could right click, go to constant and add a base constant of black and plug that into metallic. And now your object won't be as shiny. And we can hit save. Now eventually you are going to need more maps when you bring your textures in. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import. Uh, no, I'm not actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my other maps. So one thing I can do, I'm going to show you. If I right click on this and say convert to parameter, I can change this to base color. I'm just going to get rid of this constant. All right, and I'm going to hit save. So what I've done is I parameterized this material. Let me close that now. And now if I make a new material and texture, material instance, I'll we'll call this mi underscore strip texture. And if I open that up, it works, behaves a little bit differently. You see how it has uh, different options. What it relies on is a parent. So if I come to the brick shiny and specify that as the parent, now I can go in and just say, okay, well, I want to override that strip texture in there and save it. So I can make another one, material, material instance, and my underscore wood. And if I double click to open that up, it's the same process. Select the parent. And then I just need to override it to get in my other texture. All right, so this works really good. It's a, it's a good technique. Uh, it's a good optimization process. Now these materials are very simple. Let me import my textures for my floor so you can see how it's useful with a more complex material. Okay, so I've imported the normal map and my ambient occlusion roughness metallic map. This is for a texture that I had generated inside a Substance Painter, so it does have what's called a packed material. If you do have a packed material, meaning the different channels, red, green, and blue, are utilized as specific maps, you do have to make one adjustment. So I'll double click on that. And that is going in here and turning off the sRGB, and you can see the pop-up is telling you exactly that. Alpha channels are used individually as masks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this. And then I can close it. None of the other maps get that assigned to them. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make a new material. It's going to be M under floor. I'm going to call it sub master. Oh. I'm going to pop that open. Now, inside of here, I'm going to bring in my other materials or other textures. So let's bring in our base color. We're going to plug him in. We're going to bring in our normal map and we're going to plug, oops, where'd everybody go? We're going to plug him in and then we're going to plug, bring in our AORM. Let's make this full screen. Okay, so now I can plug in my ambient occlusion, my roughness. And what I'm doing is I'm saying the red channel is the only channel I'm going to use here. The green one, the roughness is the only one I'm going to use there. The metallic, it's only used in that black and white metallic map. So what I could do is I could parameterize this as well by right clicking and say, convert to parameter and name it base color. This one I could right click and say, convert to parameter, call this AORM. And then the final one I could parameterize as well, normal. And then I can save this. So once it's saved, I'll be able to go in and start assigning my textures. And then in the future, if I make another material instance, I'm just going to call this MI test because I'm not going to actually use it. And I misspelled it, which works out even better. So if I grab that floor and I use that as the parent, you can see there's more options inside of here. And so if you were to review some of my other tutorials like the ones dealing with uh, importing uh, 
opacity and self-illumination, you could parameterize materials like that as well. Okay, so let's open up each of our different pieces here. I'm going to float this and pop them all open. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to just start assigning the various maps to these objects. Let's open up the material slots. And you can highlight, right? The walls are highlighted, so now I know which one's the wall. And this is the floor. This is my ceiling. And that would make this final one my trim. Save it and then just keep going through each of the pieces. And while I'm in here, I could always double check to make sure that my light maps are set properly. They are. Uh, some of these pieces I did not create materials for, or uh, did not create collision for yet. And so I'll need to make sure that eventually I do go through and do that. There's the wood. There's the, oops, wrong one. That's the floor. And that's the wall. Save it, close it. So material slots, just going through, plugging in the textures, and getting some of them wrong. And that's all right. Just going through, clicking on the different pieces, getting all the textures in place. All right, and now we just plug in our final one floor, trim, and the wood. Okay. All right, so there we go. We now have our basic modular pieces and we could start bringing our geometry in. So my grid is already set to 10. I'm gonna change that to 100 and I'm gonna bring in my straight piece. And I'm gonna zero it out in the world. There we go. So that's the exact center. I don't need this stuff. I'm going to delete these pieces. It does leave a shadow behind, but eventually I'm going to build lighting and change that. So maybe I'll take this guy. I'm just going to raise him up so that he's sitting above that floor. All right. So now uh, if you use control C and control V on your keyboard, that's copy and paste functionality. And that works. You can see just dragging my modular pieces over. They easily snap in. If you hold the alt key, you could, it will clone what you have selected. You could then come in and change which pieces. If you hold the Alt key while rotating, I like to change my rotate to 45. You could then swap your pieces around a little bit. And so the idea of building on a grid like this is what we call rapid prototyping. It allows you to be able to get in to a game engine and quickly be able to iterate and build an environment. Uh, you could test it out. You can, you'll notice Unreal did its famous trick there where it, uh, it changed which pivot I was working off of. Should be a little bit frustrating. Uh, it chooses a different one sometimes than the one you anticipated when you're going to do your rotates. If you have multiples. I think it likes to pick the one uh, over in this location. But I'm just moving and rotating my pieces around. So what you'll want to do is just kind of generally run through and just kind of test them out to make sure that they're working properly, or I should say, uh, as you would expect. All right, that's really the important thing. You want to make sure that they're functioning in a way that you know makes sense for what it is that you're doing. Just rotate this around. Oops. And get that in place. Let's delete this wall. Okay, so here I have kind of my basic pieces in here. I'm gonna override this guy with a dead end. And just rotate him around and then move him into place. Okay, so there we go. It's a basic modular set. Uh, if I hit play, I can come over here some of these pieces have collision, some do not. I'll need to build it for the ones that don't. Oh, right out of the world. But these pieces have it. 
So once I go through and build collision for all my pieces, everything will work out just fine. Uh, one thing eventually you will need to go through and don't worry about lighting needs to be built. Lighting is always going to be need to build as long as you're actually creating assets and objects for a game. Eventually you'll go through and build lighting. You may also need to go through and place some basic objects. So if I come over here and just drag in a point light, I can position this in the scene. Uh, just keep in mind that you can, you're can you limited in how many of the basic stationary lights you can place. You may need to switch them over to static. And in order for your materials to look the best they can, uh, you want to have a sphere reflection capture because those actually capture the reflections that are needed for your... Uh, for your... Oh boy, drawing a blank. For the materials to work properly. Should not have taken me that long to think that through. All right, so you want to save all down here. That's going to save all the different pieces you've been importing. And then you're going to want to go up to the top. You're going to want to save current, right? Or file, just do save all. It's going to save your map and everything. Uh, and then eventually you'll want to build lighting. But, you know, that's, that's kind of, that's the basics of jumping in and getting started inside Unreal.